we have the benefit of having dealt with chords both in the context of circles, which obviously is very similar to ellipses, and also uh, we dealt with chords on the parabola, right? All we mean by chord is, well, how would you define a chord to a student who's never seen that word before? Two intersection points. Okay, you've got two points, right, that are on, on a particular locus, right? And we want the, now let's be a little more specific, we want the interval that joins those two, okay? So an interval has a start and end, hence the two points you just mentioned. A ray starts somewhere, it goes forever, and a line goes forever in both directions. So the interval is what I'm after, okay? So therefore I need two points, so let's call them um, P and Q, so given two points on the locus, on the ellipse. Now, we already have some parametric equations that make this quite easy to state. So, for any given point on the ellipse, what would you call that? X and Y. X, Y, Y. Okay, now, in Cartesian terms, if I didn't know anything about them, I have to call them X or Y, they have nothing to do with each other. A a or or but in parametric form, I can call them A cos theta and B sine theta. Very good. But for a chord, I need a second point, right? So I'll call that, very originally, Q. Now, nicely, there's something in common with uh, the first point, namely that A and B are still the same. Do you agree with that? Like the A squared and B squared, I'm still in the same ellipse, right? So therefore, this will be A and this will be B. But clearly, I want a different point on the ellipse, right? So I need a different angle, right? Now, just by convention, if you're in um, theta mode rather than like alpha, beta, gamma, etc., what comes after theta is phi. So this is A cos phi, B sine phi. Okay. So it's confusing because phi is actually a ratio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's just not enough good symbols in you know in, in the world. I mean, we're even appealing to a whole second alphabet, and we still it's a bit crowded. So anyway. Now, given two points on the ellipse, P and Q, the chord is simply P Q. Now, if you want the equation of the line that gives you the interval between these two points, what form are we going to use? Y minus point gradient. Yeah, wait, ooh, wait, hold on. Oh, well, now, we could use either point gradient or two point form because using these two points, I can get a gradient. But really, those two are the same form, uh, in case you didn't recognize. Like, two point is this, right? Y minus Y1 on Y2 minus Y1. You agree with that? You recognize that? It looks familiar? Okay. Now, all I need to do is multiply through by this denominator, and you should hopefully be able to recognize, let's put that y2 minus y1 on the top, this oh. denominator here, and then that guy over there, that's point gradient form, right? They're the same form, which shouldn't surprise us because they're going to give us the same line, okay? So I've got two points here, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the first form. So it's going to go like this, y minus, now for reasons that will become clear in a brief moment, I'm going to designate, uh, what was I going to designate? This one is x1, y1, and this one as, um, is that what I was going to do? Yes, yes it is. And this one is going to be x2, y2. Now it seems backwards, but in fact, it's going to give us exactly what would be nice in here. So y minus y1, that's going to be b sine phi on, uh, let's see, b sine theta minus b sine phi equals. Okay. So, much of it, much of this, really. Now, when you look at this, it looks like a mesh, does it not? Um, I can simplify a tiny bit by getting all the constants on one side and all of the variables, namely x and y, on the other side. So all that involves is just a swap of these two, okay? So I'm gonna chuck this guy over on this denominator to get all the x's and y's over here, and I'm gonna put this denominator up here to get all the constants, a, sorry, a, b, and our angles all on the right-hand side, as much as possible anyway, okay? So it's a pretty minor shift, but it's gonna look like this. Uh, and while I'm at it, you can also see on these two, on the numerator and the denominator for the right-hand side, I can factorize a tiny little bit, right? So you can see I can get a b out of this, and an a out of this. Okay. Now, we almost can't do any amount anymore, really, almost. Um, if you have a look at the left-hand side, everything is kind of reasonably nice and neat, at least I've got 
the right variables matched up with the right constants that I'm expecting because these are uh, y constants and these are x constants. Okay. Over on the right, when you look at that, that seems like something simple enough and like sort of like patterned and symmetrical enough. There ought to be some kind of identity that should simplify this down. Um, and your intuition should sort of say, hmm, I wonder if I could write that in an easier way. And the answer is, you can, and I'll show you what it is, but I'm not going to prove it, and I will tell you in a second, so that's a why, why. Okay, so here's the identity that I'm going to use. Okay, now, to go from this to this, right? From this, which is, you know, it's not that bad. Like, it's reasonably okay. Good morning. Up to this, which I think we can agree is better. Like, there's a single treatment function instead of four of them, even though the angle, the argument you're sticking in there is a bit of a mess, but that's okay. Um, to get from that star to that star, is a long and somewhat dull proof, okay? Which is why in an older version of the extension 2 course, when it was called, when it was properly called 4 unit, that's the official name, um, this result, uh, well actually cause of that and sign of that, that was actually a quotable result for extension 2 students. Uh, they had to know that just like they knew their sum and difference orders for sine and cosine and tan. Uh, and this is one of the proofs. It's not that difficult to go from this, like if I gave you <coughs> Excuse me, this with a minus sign in the front, and this. I could say, prove this. Like it's an identity, it's not hard to do, you just kind of have to tease it apart and it takes a little bit of time. Okay? But you can't quote it and you can't memorize it, so there's kind of no point having to go all the way through that. All you learn is a bit of trick, which is not actually going to be that applicable, which is why it was taken out of the course. Okay? So I'm just going to for now. Leave that just so you can recognize it. Okay, this is the equation of the chord on an ellipse in pretty much the simplest form. You have. Okay, so this is a chord between any p and q, where p and q are arbitrary points on the ellipse. 